Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always the right time to praise our God. You know, it's always, no matter what's going on in your life, to lift the Lord up, to praise Him every time, every time you wake up. You know, every time a guy was talking on the radio about, you know, we, we talk about pray without ceasing, and we can't always get down on our knees, but you know, we can always pray in our heart. We can always pray in our thoughts. You know, that person that God puts on your heart to talk to, do it. Because we never know if that's the last time you'll see that person. You know, whether it's to call a family member or to pray for that person. Because sometimes God will wake you up and intercede and say, hey, I need you to pray for this person. Because that may make all the difference in their life. We don't necessarily know what people are going through at any one moment, but God does. Amen. And that's what we always got to remember. <clears throat> what was put on my heart? Uh... Uh, so I just thought about this one way. Psalms 99, and this is out of the Amplified Version. It said, the Lord reigns. Let the people tremble with reverential fear. He sits enthroned above the cherub. Cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all the peoples. Let them confess and praise your great name. Awesome and reverence inspiring. It is holy and holy is he. The strength of the king who loves righteousness and equity, you establish an uprightness. You execute justice, justice and righteousness in Jacob, Israel. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Footstool, holy is he. Hallelujah. Moses and Aaron, this verse 6, were among his priests. Ammon was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And he answered them. Hallelujah. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the statutes he gave them. You answered them. O oh Lord our God. You are forgiving God to them. Although avenging their evil doings and wicked practices. Extol the Lord our God. And worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. <clears throat> One thing we never want to forget. Is we serve a holy God. A righteous God. A God that cares about us, cares about what we do, cares about what we think. You know, and, and the one thing I can see that, that as a people, if you look through the Bible, it's so many times you have that heart of God. I just wish my people would trust and obey. Yeah. Trust and obey. That song, trust and obey, there's no other way. There, there isn't any other way. When you decide to call upon the, the name of Jesus, from that point on, it should be a lifelong thing. You know, we, we always say, uh, you know, we, we, they went through that where you get stickers and stuff. What would Jesus do? You know, we had that WWJD. But that wasn't really enough because it's what would Jesus say in that situation? How would Jesus act in that situation? I tell you what, if that passed through your mind before you did some things, that would change a whole lot. See, I deal, I deal with driving all the time. And I see some strange stuff out there, let me tell you. You know, I... I, I get a truck and, you know, I see peekers, sidewinders, people jump through traffic and everything. And it's always worse. It's just the way it is when they have a sticker on their car, you know. And I, I'm, I mean, I, 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 Jesus didn't drive a car, but he's, drive, he's in you and you're driving a car and it don't look very good. Again, how would Jesus act? How would Jesus in that situation? And we all got to do it because the very person you don't think is watching you, you know, is the one watching you. Isn't that something? The one person you didn't think. I was thinking about that the other night. I, I haven't always been where I'm at now, but I thank God I'm not the same as you used to be. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, I, I, God brought me a long way so I could be calm. I didn't always be calm. And, you know, when somebody catch you not in that calmness, you know, and, and they think, what's going on? But then you realize, you know what? I'm not perfect either. I'm not perfect, you know, but I serve a perfect God who's living in me. And he's still working on me. He's still working in me. You know? You know, I, to, I, I know I know I shared this before, but you know, people ask me, well, Tim, I don't know. I know how you used to act, you know? And I always tell them, that was BC. I always tell them, that's BC. What does that mean? I said, that's before Christ. Let's take a look at the life afterwards and see. It doesn't mean I always got it right, but I tell you what, my heart's gonna be right before God. Because, you know, you're going to face your maker one day. And it's his righteousness anyway. It's nothing we can do here. It's Jesus Christ. And it's just like Moses. 
You know, when Moses spent so much time with God, his face glowed, he had to put a veil on it. And I tell you what, people ought to see when the disciples, they said they've been with Jesus because, you know, they sound like him. They act like that's something they know that you have been with them. And that's the way we all need to be. It's just like that. When people know. See, because we shouldn't have one attitude at church and one attitude at home. Right? It should be identical. Right? But some let me tell you. Let me tell you, things can change really, really quick. You know? But no, you know what? Because uh, my my daughter was uh, was talking and, and and what she remembers most, it's really interesting what your kids remember most when they grow up. Because, you know, you provide for them. I, I worked, drive a truck for years and drove a truck for years, and they remember a lot of things. But you know the thing that touched your heart most is when they can tell you, Daddy, you know what I remember? When we used to pray together. Well, that touches your heart. You know, you think about all the jeans and all the other stuff you bought. See, that, that passes away because that's temporary. You know, they're talking about something eternal. That time you pray with them. I think about my mom. We was just talking about the other night. The best thing mom left me, you know, when you go through a thing, get it, was a family Bible. You said his Bible, and she had passages marked, different prayer requests in there. That's powerful. Because I remember just she'd open the Bible, a big family Bible, and read out of it, you know. And, and just to have that word going or see her praying. I remember one time we went to a church and went down there, and they would have sort of like the way we take offering here, but they, they'd have prayer, prayer requests that went inside a little pouch. And, you know, and then they'd come bring them up and pray for them. Well, I come to the church and evidently mom's request didn't get in the basket. It missed the basket and it was in front, so I picked it up. You know, I picked it up and I looked in there, and you know, she was praying for one of her children. You know, just she wrote that and prayed, you know, for my brother. I just thought, how powerful is that? Because a true parent, one that loves the Lord, you know what they're not going to do? They're not going to ever give up on their kids. No matter how far they may be away from the Lord, and they, they, you know they're running the wrong way. But you know what? Hey, wait a minute. You know, the arms, God's arms are not too long. You know, they're not out there. They can stretch a long way to grab you. They're not too short. They can't reach up. They can stretch a long way. You know, the Bible says if I make my bed in hell, you know what I would say? If you make a bed in hell, you plan on staying there for a while. You know? <laughs> if you make your bed up, but you know, hey, God's still there. You know what? God's still down there. God's not going to stop calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. So you never give up on your kids. Because a thief on the cross, that's a perfect example. Boy, that's cutting it close, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> that's cutting it pretty close. But you know what? You know, hey, remember me. You know, it's funny how the thief on the cross, he didn't go a big, big thing. You know, he says, hey, I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry. He didn't have a whole list. He said, remember me. Just, I mean, how short a prayer? Remember me. You know, Jesus had a lot going on at that part. You think about all the sins and he'd been beaten and everything, you know. And can you have to see the compassion? And you know, and there's someone still yelling out, well, we'll believe if you come off the cross. You know, and he goes, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. How powerful is that? Father, forgive them. You know, and he turns, you know, and he didn't, he didn't accuse, you know, he didn't say all these things to you know, hey, you know what? You should have lived a better life. That was your problem. You said, no, no, this day, see? Not tomorrow, but this day, you're going to be with me, see? See, and, and people, and me, be with me in paradise. You know what? And people say, well, Tim, you know, he, he didn't really have a long life to live a testimony for the Lord. He didn't have a long life. I said, how many people have been saved because of that man right there? That that's been preached down through the generations. How many people have been saved? But hey, wait a minute. It wasn't too late for the thief on the cross, so it's not too late for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man. We get fired up here. Before we get, before we get started. No, that's all right. Well, we're going to open this up for prayer requests and praises because we all got a praise from the God for what he's done for you. The fact that you're in this house, thank, thank the Lord that you're able to come to church and worship him. So we're going to open it up right now for a testimony. Yes, Ron. Uh, I understand you just heard tonight that the, our legislators or whatever in the state here, they're in a heated battle over a bill they want to push through that would uh, restrict abortion. Anytime they get a fetal uh, heartbeat, Of course, they'll go to the courts, you know, but hey, we'll let the Lord fight that. 
Yeah, hallelujah. I believe we stand in a gap for that. They will get this done. Yeah, and this, I will, will be something that God can use mightily. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, we would do that. You know what? You, you, you ever wonder why you're in this state? You ever wonder why you're in this position? You know, God brought you here for a reason. See, it, God, God doesn't do things for empty reasons. He does them for a reason. You were born when you were born to be at this time. You know, and Esther had said, who knows whether that come the kingdom at such a time as this, right? And we are here for a reason. We're not born in vain. You think about that. Think about your life and the reason you, you're around the people you're at, the family that you're in, you know, and, and God shows you to be a light yep. I tell you, in that family. Because I tell you, you can make all the difference just like that. The fact that they did that, Ron, can change a whole lot of people's lives. A whole lot of people's lives. For a generation that she'll be created to praise him. For a generation. Hallelujah. Someone else. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. I think you know, that I can see signs of wonders, and there was a reason I had to see that for you. I didn't understand it. I was just walking home, not just walking, but either you were aroused. And the prettiest thing you ever seen, a long tail, and it's probably a grouse. And you're sitting there, and this thing sticks up, standing up where it's down, and goes in this tree, and just sits there. And it's like, I just kept my mind on that bird, and that when it got one thing, keep the eye on the sparrow, and just be, look up and look up to keep the eye more. Because you, you see this stuff. And this signs in Revelation, this is what Pastor was talking about. The signs are there. Mm -hmm. If we just notice them and try to keep our eyes on Him more um, in the point. That's right. And uh, Hallelujah. More, Doing one for a very blessing to me. It's so many people in the world here. It's just the mere spirit of the walk. It's a God given thing to talk to you. Praise the Lord. Big and overrun with power. Hallelujah. Thank you. God is good. You know, we give him the glory. Yes. Right. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we'll definitely do that because we called to intercede. Yes. You know, we're we're called, you know, to stand in the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's who God wants people willing to stand in the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see people's lives change, you know, it works. I mean, we're a testimony. I mean, people they people can argue. They can argue doctrine. They can argue this point, but they can't argue what happened to you because you know what happened to them. That's what Paul did so often. Hey, you know, on the road to Damascus, guess what? I met Jesus Christ. That's what happened to Paul. And he shared that testimony over and over and over again. Okay? And that's what people can't refute. I know where I used to be. You know, I know when that day when my life got surrendered to the Lord. I know when it was. And, it, and it's been a walk, you know. It's been a walk. But Jesus says, he says, come follow me. If you're following somebody, they're walking in front of you. And you think about Jesus walking that, and he's walking with you that whole time, you know? And, and the things that he's been through, it's like, you know what? I, 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 I've been driving since 1976, and, and a lot of times I share, 
I said, all those years, you know, driving, you know, you got the experience. It doesn't make you an expert. What it does, it makes you know what works and what doesn't work. Right. That's what that's what it makes you. You know, you've been so, told me familiar things, but you never always get it just right. But you know, hey, I've seen this situation before. That experience, and that's what God just experienced him. Oh, to know him. Paul said that's so, to know him. That's what people got to come. You know, was God real? Said so knowing him. Take the time to get to know him and get a relationship with him. Because I often say that, you know, people say, you're a religious man. And I know I said before, no, I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual man. There's a big difference in there. You know, you know, and I go to, you don't, you don't go to church just out of habit just to be seen. You go to meet with God. That's the big difference. I remember as a kid, they wouldn't say necessarily just go to church. Where do you worship at? That's how it was always set up. Where do you worship at? Because that's what it was meant to go. You went to church. We didn't have, we, I talked to my sister last night. We didn't have padded pews or air conditioning and all that stuff, you know. We didn't have that. But we know who we went to see every Sunday to meet with. And that was to meet with God. That was the difference. So when you walked out of the house, you was challenged. Our pastor, Reverend Butler, is thinking about him. I don't think there was a day unless it was some, some unusual circumstance. He gave our altar call every single Sunday. I can't remember him not. He always wore a robe. He always preached in a robe. And he'd come down in front of the altar. Who will come today? Who will come today? You know? And I remember I got that call. Your heart gets tugged up. So you have to go. You're compelled to go down that altar. And that was a change. That was a change. Hallelujah. All right. Someone else? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, stand up for prayer. <clears throat> Father God. It is you. It is all about you. Father God, you said, where there's two or three touching and agreeing, you be in the midst. And you are in the midst of this service tonight. We serve a risen Lord, a resurrected Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for God? You're able to move in those strongholds, in those situations, Lord. You're more than able. Hallelujah. It's about in the beginning, God. That's how it's always been. Hallelujah. Always be. Because you are God above all God. Hallelujah. You are, hallelujah, our wonderful Father. Hallelujah. Our counselor, the one that cares about us that loves us with an everlasting love. Oh, Father God, I ask you to be with James and the situations and, 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 and the burden, all that signs from you, Lord. Father God, that you that you did touch James, touch his heart, touch his life, touch all the prayer requests here tonight. We thank you for Mike's arm being healed, Lord, as we look at the, the change in the hearts of man, Lord. Father God, and the abortion situation, all that. Father God, you are more than able to touch the right people but touch the hearts because you work from the inside out. And Father God, tonight, Lord, Lord, we thank you that we can be in your house. We ask you to be with those who are not here today, be it Pastor and Sally. Lord, be with those, Lord, that are not in this house but are, are part of this community. Lord, that you would touch them, touch our neighbors, touch all we come in contact with, that they will see that there's a difference. There's something different about us because we choose to give our allegiance to the Lord. Father God, we thank you so much. Because you are a good God. You are all about holiness, Lord. Be ye holy, because the Lord is holy. Father God, we thank you so much that we can come and praise. That we can come and worship you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are so forgiving. You are so kind. You are so understanding. And you care about us. That we can leave all our cares upon you. Because you care about us. And Zephaniah says, you rejoice over us with singing. Like you rock us in your arms and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that's what it's all about. Your kind of love that doesn't give up. Hallelujah, when things are difficult. Oh, Father God, you are more than able to take care of all these situations. You're more than able to calm the storm. Hallelujah. Because you created, you created all this world. Hallelujah. By your spoken word. And you can tell that peace be still in those situations. Father God, we want to thank you tonight. 
we want to praise you tonight. As we go farther into this worship, we know that it's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. And we thank you in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, announcements, welcome everybody. Okay, if you have a phone, uh, we thank you for turning vibrate or, or turning off, please. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, still we're asking for someone helping a sound booth. Praying someone will come forward to help meet the needs of all events we're doing in church. See Michael back there in the booth, there in the podium, uh, back in the back. See Michael for a rigorous interview. <laughs> <laughs> Can you breathe? Can you breathe? That's a rigorous. <laughs> uh, Eastern Gate House prayer is going to be March the 9th, 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, we're uh, pressing in, uh, changing the hearts of men. It's uh, what's still burning on my heart. Um, this is uh, preparation of the changes of things that are the Lord I know is released in the heartland of this uh, nation. Um, it is also uh, preceding. Uh, the next slide, uh, which will be, oh, it's not on here, it's uh, up at Heartland uh, Church, uh, will be a time of, uh, uh, there'll be worship, but there's also kingdom business, it'll be basically a conference gathering uh, from 9 in the morning till 10 at night, there'll be different sessions and stuff, uh, like I posted on Facebook, the situation's going on, but uh, I, I believe that uh, there could be some impartation uh, they're talking about, et cetera, going on there, but um, I just want to join with the, the saints in the area uh, to confirm what they're hearing in the Lord as what we're hearing in the Lord. Uh, I know Susanna might be going, that uh, Sarah's going, um, and I'm going, Sydney's going to try to go, I think, in the evening. Uh, so, you're going to go? Okay. Uh, just let us know if you need to all go together or you meet together or something like that and hang out so we can Praise the Lord for that. Okay, uh, Brother Ron, if you would be so kind to come up and take the offer and to be seated. Oh, uh, I'm going to turn on the 
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, thank you so much. Oh, we're going to seek the Lord tonight. Lift this holy name up. He's so worthy to be praised. Oh, we want to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is good. And God is good. We want to thank the worship team tonight. for ushering in the presence of the Lord. Let's give my hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. Hallelujah. That's good. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. All right. We always appreciate the opportunity when the pastor uh, lets me come and, and share what God has put on my heart. And one of the things that, that really touched me as I prepare for these things is a preacher once told me years ago, he said, Tim, always preach what's big in your heart. Always t preach what God has laid on your heart. And one of the things that I notice is that when there's a time where there's maybe pressure coming from the outside or different circumstances, we need to call upon the Lord. And not just in that time. <clears throat> we have a tendency to do that. Lord, help me when those hard times come. But we need to establish a relationship before that happens. So we know. See, the thing, the thing about depending on God is you never want to forget. You never you want to have those watermarks. In the Old Testament, you know, they used to, when, when God did a work, you know, they built an altar to that point. And we need to do that too. We need to write down, remember what God has said to you, he's done to you. Because if God deliver you, A, I say this a lot, but I've seen it happen in my life and other people. If God deliver you when you was crying out in A, what makes you think he won't deliver you in B? Somehow we end up forgetting that the same God in A is going to be the same God in B. See, that, that's one thing that, you know, we look at the children of Israel and it's, oh, I don't know how they could act that way, you know. Because one day they was praising the Lord and next day they was complaining. Okay? You know, and, and that's where God doesn't want us at. That God wants us to have a consistent relationship with him that he knows and we know, you know, they used to say you know that you know that you know that God is going to be there no matter what. That's really where we have to be in our life. And sometimes <clears throat> I look at my life and you look at just different things that you're going through and you got to remember that. My mom used to say, you know, what do people do without the Lord? What do they do when they don't have so? You know, they go in a lot of different directions, you know. And, you know, they, they use the term a lot. You know, people uh, that don't know the Lord, they, 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 you say something that happens to you. Oh, that was luck. They, they say that. That was luck. Y'all hear that? I said, man, ain't no luck. That's a blessing of the Lord. That's not luck. Luck is just that you're looking at just to happen. It just happened that way. How did that possibly happen that way? How could that? When you see miracles, it may be in traffic. It may be a situation with your kid. One second this way and that way could have made a world of difference. Who did that? Who did that? I was sharing. I know I shared this before, but uh, one of the one of the Susan was talking to me, you know, about close calls and stuff. You know, I said, yeah, I've had them before. But the same God delivered me when I was dragging that trailer, and the, the top speed I could go is two miles an hour across 54. Because we had a problem with the, trans the clutch, and I, I couldn't get it in any other gear, but first gear and a top speed, first gear is two miles an hour. That's the top speed. 
and I got it floored. I'm trying to go across 54th, and, and trains go across there all the time. And I was driving at that student, and it's, you know, I said, okay, we're going to cross this rail track. And we had a train behind us, a lot of people. I mean, you go two miles an hour, you pick up a lot of traffic. And, and I said, we're going to go up this train track, and there's three sets together. Just hope there ain't no train, because I can't get it going any faster. So, you know, I got it floored. I'm going two miles an hour. You know, and I and I go across them train tracks, you know, and we're looking both ways, left, right, left. And as soon as my back end of my trailer gets past glass rail, guess what? A train came. We saw the lights in the mirror. And I said, you know what? We got a lot to be thankful for. You ought to share this with your kids and your grandkids. Because a second, a few seconds before that time, if that train, I couldn't have done it. All we hoped it would just jumped out. That's it. You know, and I thought when I came up one street and the truck died, I had to stop the stop sign, it died three times. The fourth time, I got going. And I thought about that. If it died one more time, that would have delayed me getting up to the tracks. Luck? No. There's no such thing in a Christian viewpoint for luck. It's God. And that's what we need not to forget. Those situations where God opened this door. God gave you that job. God gave you that husband or wife. that somebody ought to appreciate you know, it gave you food. But, you know, a lot of people can't go to the cupboard and make a choice. You know, you, you think about that. You can go, well, what should we eat? We can go to cupboards, and I tell you, you got food in there. You know, we growing up, it wasn't always the same choice. We had food. It might not be something you like to eat, but you had food. But think about the people that don't have food or don't have clothes, that don't have an opportunity to go to school. You know, what I always think about is opportunities that get wasted. You know, I tell you what, there's somebody out there who would love that opportunity you got. And, you know, and you can sit there complaining about it. Realize that God's got a plan for you. We mean not to forget that. Okay? And he's bringing you. He wants you to reflect his glory in everything you do. Because I tell you what, as lights in the world, you know, when people ask you, what is the reason for that hope? Why do you act the way you do? You know, we shouldn't just him haw around, well, you know, this way. No, it should come out with boldness. You know what I believe? I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I'm not ashamed. That's what Paul said. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of praying. I'm not ashamed of believing in God. In uh, Second Second Kings, chapter six, this is the amplified version, and and uh, <clears throat> and the, the the thing about this, you, you get it, you get a, a a reflection of how some people look at things and how the godly person should look at things. This is Second Kings, chapter six. Now we we know the story here. It's Elijah, Elisha, and uh, and I'm going to start in verse eight. And this is 2 Kings chapter 6, it's out of the Amplified Version. And it says, uh, 8, when the king of Syria was warring against Israel after counseling with his servants, he said, in such and such a place shall be my camp. Then the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, beware that thou pass not such a place, for the Syrians are coming down here. Coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent to the place of which Elijah told and warned him, and thus he protected and saved himself there repeatedly. See, God... Is, is using Elijah to warn the king. You know, he, it, it's, it, he comes to that man of God and says, you go tell the king. Now, the thing about it, Elijah was obedient to do that. You know, sometimes when we have a situation and God says, you need to go talk to this person. You know what? We don't need to put that off. Because, first of all, we don't know if that's going to be the last day. I remember when I lived here back in the 80s, and, and there was a lady that went to my church, and she had a neighbor just south of her. And one day I come back from the store, and she was knocking on my door, and I asked her, and she said, Ben is dying. And Ben was in the hospital. Ben was like 86 years old. And, and she said, Tim, would you go down to the hospital with me because he's dying? Okay? He can't speak. He's dying, but you can go talk to him. I'm afraid I don't know where he stands with the Lord. Okay? And you know what you say? Let's go. Well, you know, I got a lot of things to do today. You know, I, you know, you kind of caught me. No, you know what you do? Let's get in the car. Let's go. Let's go now. What's more important? Whatever I had to do, none of that was as important as going down there and talking to Ben. None of it was because we're dealing with eternity. Once he goes out in eternity, you either know the Lord or you don't. Right. And so we went down there and we prayed. 
Now, Ben couldn't talk, but we prayed the sinner's prayer and asked God come to, for him to come into his life. And we prayed and we prayed. And I don't, you know, we say he couldn't speak. But you know what? When we prayed, grabbed his hand, I don't know, this smile came over his face and he was peaceful. He died two days later. He died. She come and tell me he's passed away. And I thought, hallelujah, he's passed away in the glory now. He passed away. We're not going to wait. We're not. I'll go next week. There wasn't no next week. You know, and, I, and that's where God wants us to look at what is a priority. The priority is to see those people's lives change. Like Mike was talking about, the hearts change. When you see somebody that you used to know and suddenly their life is turned around, that's powerful. When you've prayed for them and prayed for them and prayed for them and they come into church one day, say hallelujah. You know, that, that, that's so rewarding to see what God has done. And people think, well, shoot, that person come to the Lord right now. You don't realize how many prayers was offered up long before that time. You know, oh, he's a great preacher. It had nothing to do with that. Those seeds were sown. It could have been sown clear back in Sunday school. It should have, could have been sown 40 years ago. Amen. But it come to fruition that night. When he was tired of fighting, and he said, I surrender all. I surrender all. Like a preacher said one time, you know, you don't want to sing that song, have thine own way. I surrender all unless you mean it. Okay? And, and this way he said here, when the king of Israel sent to the place where Elisha told and warned him, thus he protected and saved himself there repeatedly. Verse 10. Therefore the mind of the king of Syria was, Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. He called the servant and said, will you show me who of us is for the king of Israel? They thought they had a spy. But God knows what's going on. Often say, why do people sin with the shades down? You know, <laughs> it'll make no difference. God sees it. The light in the day or a night to him. So light to him. But this one said, who is this for the king of Israel? One of the servants said, none, O Lord. Lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that thou speak in your bedchamber. Because God knows. And, and, and the king said, he said, go and see where he is, that I might sin and seize him. I'll get him. And he said, we told him he is in Dothan. So the Syrian king, Syrian king, and listen what happens. He sent their horses, chariots, and a great army. We know when they say great in the Bible, that's what they mean, great. So he's got this huge army going down there. And they came by night, think about the darkest time, and surrounded the city. So they got all these warriors and, 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 and chariots and horses. And let me tell you, that would be a little intimidating to have that all around you. <clears throat> now, this is what happened. This is the different perspectives. <clears throat> when the servant of the man of God, this verse 15, rose early and went out. See, he said, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. Now, could that be intimidating? You might have all those circumstances. And this servant, now this is kind of a worldly perspective, but look at the servant. Elijah's servant said to him, Elijah, alas, master, what shall we do? What are we going to do about this? Man, that looks overwhelming. It looks like there's no way we can get out of this. You might have those circumstances. There's no way. But see, the man of God learns to trust God in all the situations, good or bad. He's still my God. You know, no matter what's going to happen. Now, <clears throat> Look, look at Elisha's response. Elisha answered. It's, and that's just the same way Jesus answered a lot. You know, hey, you don't need to be fearful. You know, a lot of the angels, that's what they said. Fear not, right? They would always say, fear not. Because Elijah understood one thing. Again, you got the world response. What should we going to do? I don't know. It don't look possible. Man, we're going to get wiped out. Elijah answered. And I like to say it answered. It doesn't say, oh man, no panic. There's a voice. You know what he says? Fear not. That's what he says. Fear not. For those with us are more than those with them. But if you look at the worldly eyes, it looks like overwhelming. Don't you realize something? A servant, you know what you realize something? So you're looking at it from this perspective. We got to look at God's perspective. That's the whole difference. <clears throat> he says, fear not, for those that with us are more than those with them. And then Elisha prayed, <clears throat> Lord, I pray you, open his eyes. That's the difference. Open his eyes, it's verse 17, that he may see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes, 
and the saw, and behold, the mount was full <coughs> excuse me, of horses, chariots, of fire around about Elisha. <coughs> Hallelujah. What's the difference? Hallelujah. The difference is the Lord opened the young man's eyes. Now, we're not talking about physical eyes here, right? Because <coughs> we know he could see because he saw all the chariots around. His spiritual eyes opened it up. Open it up, Lord, that he can see that there's more that's with us than they are with them. You may look at all this physical that's going around. The opening young man's eyes, this is the key. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots and fire round about Elisha. Yeah. That's what we always got to realize. We know in the Bible that one third of the angels fell when they got cast out of heaven. And somebody made a comment, how many angels? We don't know. It could be a million. But the Bible also says... If one-third fell, that means there's two-thirds left, right? There was two-thirds. Same way. There's more that's with us than are with them. That's what we always got to realize. God is more than enough. That's what we always got to realize in those situations, that we always got to trust God. That was a cry so often of Jesus' heart. You know, when, when Peter and them was out in the ship and, and, and it was going to go down in this storm, they were fishermen. And they were used to storm, but something was different. And Jesus was down there sleeping. What's going on? He's down there sleeping. Somebody needs to go wake him up because we're going to perish in this storm. So it must have been really intimidating. Again, you know, they're looking at the worldly circumstances. And we've all been in storms. You know, we've been where things get to shaking. I've been going down the road, and I've had my trailer lifted off the ground. Let me tell you, it creates a little anxiety. Let me tell you, let me tell you to see the old trailer go up there. And I've had it shaking. But you know what? God is still there. God is still there. And that's what we always got to remember. We got to ask God, open our eyes so we can always see God. That's what the Bible talks about those witnesses. You know, that we all looked at a cloud of witnesses. I always thought, you know, I, I looked at that and I thought, you know, cloud of witnesses, who are those? Those are ones that's gone before that kept the faith. That said, you know what? I always feel like, you know, you, you watch marathon runners or, or you watch uh, bicycle different and they're running and people along the way, you know, they're rooting for you? Well, tell you what, you got a lot of people rooting for you. Because you know what? A true Christian wants you to do well. Yes. They want you to finish this race well. There's nobody that gets any, any pleasure. I don't like to see people fall. I like to see them succeed. You know, I like to see them go all the way. You know what Jesus did, you think about all he went, went through for us. The Bible said he's obedient even to death of the cross. He went for us. But there was a struggle in there. He wanted Peter and them to pray for him. You know, and that struggle. But finally, you know what? Nevertheless, not my will. When you surrender that, then God moved. It got to come to that point. You know what? You either trust God. Because really, there's no other way to really be happy in Jesus like the song says, unless you totally trust him in every situation. I found out one of the worst mistakes I think that we end up making is that we pray after the fact rather than before the fact. If we would ask God in so many situations, how should I handle this situation? And then listen to God's answer. We would keep out a whole lot of trouble. You know, should I move here? Should I not move here? Should I take this job? Should I be with this person? God knows the heart of the people. He knows the people in the neighborhood. I remember flying my first time I flew into Chicago. And one thing was fascinating to me. They turn you around over Lake Michigan and, and you go in the hair. And, and as, as you get lower in the skyscrapers and you get lower, you start seeing cars. And you get low enough, you can actually see people walking around. And I got to thinking, wow, God knows what's going on in everybody's heart at this moment. And he can keep it all straight. It's not just a bunch of voices. He can keep it straight. And I thought, how powerful is that? How powerful. I remember when I, I used to sell a, I used to work for the football stadium down at the University of Missouri. And I never forget this. I was 12, 13 years old, and we'd sell programs, and after that, you can go sell Cokes in a, in a little rack, and you take them up. And they was yelling up the top, hey, come on up. And I remember going all the way to the top of the University of Missouri Stadium, all the way up to the press box. And I turned around, and I looked, and I could see the whole field at once. I could see all 22 players on the field, the bench, everything. And it dawned on me, this is God's perspective. This is his perspective. He's looking from here down. 
I thought, wow, if we could see up here, I could see which way to run the ball. You could see all that different stuff because you had the perspective. And that's what we're talking about here is getting the right perspective. Not like a servant. What should we do? Oh, man, we're surrounded. Open your eyes and see that God is for you. Yes. That's what we always got to remember. God is for you. God is on your side. Yes. And we need to never forget that. Every time you go through anything, realize God is on your side. He loves you. He loves you enough to die for him. I often say this, that if he died for us, we ought to live for him. Yes. Okay? And we ought to, whatever he asks us to do. Is there too great a sacrifice? I, w- I want to share this. And, and I learned a lot from, from saints that have been long gone. But their, their stories are powerful because they learn to serve God no matter what the circumstances. And Polycarp, I'm sure you all heard that name, you know, but Polycarp, uh, one, one thing about him is that, you know, Polycarp, you know, he, he and we're talking second century way back, but one thing about Polycarp is that they gave him an opportunity. He's a bishop of Smyrna, and they gave him an opportunity that if, if, if you worship the Roman emperor, we won't kill you and bring you to stay. We won't kill you if you worship the Roman emperor. And this is his response. And I, I just thought, I remember, I remember reading this years ago. <clears throat> In the martyrdom of Polycarp, he was recording a saying on the day of his death. This, this to me just has sunk in me for years. Now, he, and this is a quote from him. Uh, in the martyrdom, Polycarp was quoted saying on the day of his death, Eighty and six years have I served him. He has done me no wrong. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Which could indicate that he was then 86 years old. Now, look at that. And he goes on to say, How then can I blaspheme my king and savior? How can I do that? How can I blaspheme my king and savior? You threaten me with fire that burns for a season, and after a little while it is quenched, but you are ignorant of the fire of everlasting punishment that is prepared for the wicked. Uh Okay? And Polycarp was burned at the stake and was pierced with the spear for refusing to burn incense to the Roman emperor. On his farewell, this, this got me, folks. On his farewell, he said, I bless you, Father, for judging me worthy of this hour, so then the company of the martyrs, I may share this cup of Christ. Now, folks, that's being real right there. This is not a wishy-washy Christian at all. This is somebody that says, you know what, I'm willing to go all the way. I am willing. See, we got to have that heart of Christ that we are willing, even if it costs us this or costs us that. You know, what's more important than Christ? There is nothing. Polycarp understood that. That I got worthy. And worth, think about it, all the martyrs I may share the cup of Christ. And I think that one thing we want to do as I, as I wrap this up, get that fresh perspective of looking through God's eyes on everything you see. Not what's surrounding you like the servant. What should we do? There's no way out of this. God says so many times, is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know, Ali once said, impossible is an opinion, not a fact. <laughs> you know, that's what he said. And God deals in the impossible. A situation you think nobody else can possibly deal. There's no way to get out of this circumstance. But you forget. But God. That's what you forget. You, people forget that God can move. I tell you what, when he hung the moon and the stars and, and he done that, you think he can't move in a situation, a move on an attorney's heart, a move on a family's heart? You know, sometimes we put God, we make him so small. We make him so small. Tammy Faye Baker, you know, you think God is bigger than anything. And that's true. We got to get to that point. We make God bigger than our problems. We tend to reverse it. Make our problems are so big. They're not big to God. They're not. You know, heaven don't have no panic room. You know, one person said, oh, man, what are we going to do about that? Oh, man, we got to figure this out. I never, ever got a vision of that in heaven. Not one time. I got to, like Isaiah said, I see the Lord high and lifted up. That's what I get a picture of. His holiness. Said, I got this. You know, we used to today talk about, I got this. I got this. 
Somebody asked me, does anything scary out there? And I said, what am I going to get afraid for? What am I going to afraid? Because I know Jesus lives in my heart. And even if, if, if something happened to you, you know you're going up. You know you're going up. You know, I, we don't, and so many times the Bible says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Why? Because Jesus said, because I live, you should live also. Uh -huh. Boy, talk about a promise right there. Because I live, you should live also. Just come on with me. On. Father God, thank you tonight yeah. yes. that you are real. Yes. Thank us that, Lord, we want to just give you the praise. Thank you for your holiness. Thank you for your truth. And one thing, open our eyes so we can see that there's more that's with us than I'm with them. Yeah. That, Lord, you are on our side. You said you love us with an everlasting love. And, Lord, let us never forget that. Oh, hallelujah. You're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, like Polycarp, who stood strong, let us not be afraid what can be done in the body. Because we know that we belong to you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in John, let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And those that are struggling with those issues, let them look towards you. Yes. Look toward the hills that whence cometh my help. Uh -huh. My help coming from the yes, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. That amazing grace. Hallelujah. Lord. Let us never forget that. Hallelujah. God is still God no matter what. Yes. He's still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. Father God, we thank you for tonight's service. We thank you that you met us here. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That, Lord, we won't leave this building the same way that we came. Yes, Lord. That, Lord, that you stir up inside of us yes. that desire to seek you more and more every day. Uh -huh. God, you are good God. Yes. And you are good all the time. No matter what the circumstance, you're still going to be there. And Lord, we give you tonight, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give Lord a so We thank you all for being here tonight. Bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you.